I'm like, bro. Does he, he got a kid? Look at his back. Oh my god. <laughs> To uh, George Carlin flying. Yeah. Mm. It's been a while, man. Reacting to George Carlin. Yeah. Wanted to take a little break, you know, whatever. Yeah, we haven't reacted to him in a minute. Yeah. But uh, George Carlin's funny as hell, man. And I feel like a lot of stuff he's talking about. Plus, certain... so right now. Yeah, uh, plus, yes. Scary. <laughs> Scary almost. But yeah, if you're enjoying the reactions, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. It's the road to 10K subscribers, man. Our subscriber count been going up like crazy these past few days. We got like a hundred some subscribers yesterday, bro. We yeah. appreciate our support mm -hmm. and our ranters. Something else we have in common. Flying on the airlines and listening to the airlines announcements and trying to pretend to ourselves that the language they're using is really English. Doesn't seem like it to me. Whole thing starts when you get to the gate. First announcement. We would like to begin the boarding process. Extra word, process. Not necessary. Boarding is enough. We'd like to begin the boarding. Simple. Tells the story. People add extra words when they want things to sound more important than they really are. Boarding process. Sounds important. It isn't. It's just a bunch of people getting on an airplane. People like to sound important. Weathermen on television talk about shower activity. Shower activity. <laughs> sounds more important than shower. I even heard one guy on CNN talk about a rain event. Rain event. Louisiana's <laughs> expecting a rain event. I thought, holy shit, I hope I can get tickets to that. <laughs> the emergency situation. <laughs> yeah, they all they would scream like that. They responded to an emergency situation. No, they haven't. They've responded to an emergency. We know it's a situation. <laughs> Everything is a situation. Anyway, as part of this boarding process, they say we would like to pre-board. Well, what exactly is that, anyway? What does it mean to pre-board? To get on before you get on? <laughs> That's another complaint of mine. Too much use with this prefix pre. It's all over the language now. Pre this, pre that. Place the turkey in a preheated oven. It's ridiculous. There are only two states an oven can possibly exist in, heated or unheated. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pre-recorded. This program was pre-recorded. Well, of course it was pre-recorded. When else are you going to record it? Afterwards? <laughs> well, the whole purpose of recording to do it beforehand. Otherwise, it doesn't really work, does it? Pre-existing, pre-planning, pre-screening. You know what I tell these people? Pre-suck my genital situation. We would like to pre-board those passengers traveling with small children. But what about those passengers traveling with large children? Oh, you have a two-year-old with a pituitary disorder. You know, a six-foot infant with an oversized head. Kind of kid you see in the National Enquirer all the time. Actually, with a kid like that, I think you're better off checking him right in with your luggage at the curb, don't you? Well, they like it under there. It's dark. They're used to that. About this time, someone is telling you to get on the plane. Get on the plane, get on the plane. I say, fuck you, I'm getting in the plane. Get on the plane. In the plane. Let evil Knievel get on the plane. I'll be in here with you folks in uniform. There seems to be less wind in here. They might tell you you're on a non-stop flight. Well, I don't think I care for that. No, I insist that my flight stop. Preferably at an airport. Because those sudden unscheduled cornfield and housing development stops that seem to interrupt the flow of my day. You dying in the crowd. Here's one yeah, they just one. made up. Near miss. When two planes almost collide, they call it a near miss. It's a near hit. <laughs> a collision is a near miss. <laughs> Look, they <we> nearly missed. <laughs> yes, but not quite. <laughs> Tell you you're 
your flight has been delayed because of a change of equipment. Broken plane. Tell me to put my seat back forward. <laughs> seat back forward. <laughs> <that way. laughs> if I can put my seat back forward, I'd be in porno movies. And they mentioned carry-on luggage. First time I heard carry-on, I thought they were going to bring a dead deer on board. I thought, what the hell do you with that? Don't they have a little TV dinners anymore? But I thought, carry on, carry on. There's going to be a party. People are going to be carrying on on the plane. Well, I don't care for that. I like a serious attitude on the plane, especially on the flight deck, which is the latest euphemism for cockpit. Can't imagine why they wouldn't want to use a lovely word like cockpit, can you? Especially with all those stewardesses going in and out of it all the time. <laughs> Uniform. <laughs> Especially that guy sitting next to you in the great like the t-shirt or something. Fuck your hat. Who's <laughs> working on his ninth little bottle of Kahlua, I might add. As soon as they close the door to the aircraft, that's when they begin the safety lecture. I love the safety lecture. This is my favorite part of the airplane ride. I listen very carefully to the safety lecture. Especially that part where they teach us how to use the seat belts. <laughs> Imagine this. Here we are, a plane full of grown human beings. Grown human beings. They're partially mean. educated. And they're actually taking time out to describe the intricate workings of a belt buckle. Place the small metal flap into the buckle. Well, I asked for clarification at that point. Yes, thank you very much. Did I hear you correctly? Did you say place the small metal flap into the buckle or place the buckle over and around the small metal flap? I'm a simple man. I do not possess an engineering degree, nor am I mechanically inclined. Sorry to have taken up so much of your time. Please continue with the wonderful safety lecture. <laughs> Seatbelt. High-tech shit. The safety lecture continues. The next thing they do, they tell you to locate your nearest emergency exit. I do this immediately. I locate my nearest emergency exit, and I plan my route. You have to plan your route. It's not always a straight line, is it? Sometimes there's a really big fat fuck sitting right in front of you. Well, you know you'll never get over him. I look around for women and children, midgets and dwarfs, cripples, war widows, paralyzed veterans, people with broken legs, anybody who looks like they can't move too well. The emotionally disturbed come in very handy at a time like this. You might have to go out of your way to find these people, but you'll get out of the plane a lot goddamn quicker, believe me. I say, let's see. I'll go around the fat fuck, step on the widow's head, step on the head, out of the way, knock down the paralyzed midget, and get out of the plane where I can help others. <laughs> you help him out with the safety. He's just a midget, he's a paralyzed midget. You tell him, why is a paralyzed midget on a plane? Like zombie. I can be of no help to anyone if I'm lying unconscious in the aisle with some big cocksucker standing on my head. I must get out of the plane, go to a nearby farmhouse, have a Dr. Pepper, and call the police. The Dr. Pepper. The safety lecture continues. In the unlikely event. This is a very suspect phrase, especially coming as it does from an industry that is willing to lie about arrival and departure times. In the unlikely event of a sudden change in cabin pressure, roof flies off. An oxygen mask will drop down in front of you. Place the mask over your face and breathe normally. Well, I have no problem with that. I always breathe normally when I'm in a 600 mile an hour uncontrolled vertical dive. I also shit normally. <laughs> oh man, George Carlin's funny as hell. I guess.
can see him in like I can see him making like nineteen fifties like uh, commercials, like tutorial commercial. <laughs> like how to be a good citizen in America. Oh uh, yeah, like there's a uh, that's conformity commercial. Or how to uh how to be a good soldier in Germany. <laughs> You're not dare to help the Germans. You need to watch the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, his, the way he be using these words and his standards, bro, like, you can tell, like, people's like, oh, I didn't even think about it like that. Yeah, man, George Carlin had said some one of his stand-up, uh, stand-up bits. I think it was, like, seven words you can't see on live television or something like that. And it led to, like, the Senate, like, United States Senate passing, like, legislature. And it was, like, a huge thing. And, oh, for real? Uh, yeah, that was, that was crazy. But yeah, let us know if you enjoyed your reaction. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share, man. For we'll 10K. Uh, we'll see you next time we be. Peace. No! I don't know.